Waterfowl here back with you guys. Today's video we're going to talk about why public land sucks. Uh, in today's video I'm going to cover a few things on pros of public land hunting and some cons of public land hunting. Now obviously there's probably hundreds of videos out there just like mine. I'm not copying anybody, not trying to steal anybody's quotes or anything, just giving you my little uh, output on it and my beliefs and my experiences because everybody's experience is completely different when it comes to public land hunting. There are a lot of ups to public land hunting as far as having a place to always go and there's a lot of downfalls to public land hunting as you guessed it, number one, a lot of people else can go there too. So the first point I'm going to talk about with public land hunting and I'm going to just squash all of the the discontent of everybody on reason number one through ten or this is the worst versus this is the best. I'm giving you my opinion on everything and that's for you to delect and take for yourself, dissect and, and give your own opinion on it. Um, the problem okay and everybody talks about this everybody's got groups everybody's got buddies everybody knows this but nobody seems to want to really do anything about it in the aspect that i've seen over the years making a change for public land hunting to make it better to the reason why i think it sucks is people the land is the land there's there's places you can go with water there's places you can go with cover there's places you can go that have food plots there's places that you can go that have all kinds of goodies that support wildlife. You know, some places you go water, waterfowl hunting, deer hunting, um, turkey hunting, uh, pheasant hunting, whatever species you're targeting. Generally, when you look on your regulations, it's going to tell you if you have it. And then some more extensive websites or even your local uh, outdoor store or uh, sporting goods store will even have like a chart that tells you whether people have been doing good or not. So. There's so many variations that, that come to this, but my biggest point in all of this is when public land becomes crappy to everybody, it's the people, not necessarily the habitat. Um, there's a lot of conservation groups out there that you can support, and you'll actually know where your money goes, you'll actually see it, you'll actually hear about the group going out and doing things about it. I mean, that's, that's stable. It's not where it should be, but we're getting there and there is a generation that has taken a leap in recognizing it and trying. Um, when you go out on public land, there's a lot of factors that you have to understand before you just go out there. Um, what are you hunting on that land? Where are you, where are you hunting on that land? Is it really close to a road? I, I mean again huge factors to go through on public land in general as far as getting out there people on public land are going to act differently in my opinion than they are let's say at a get together with a bunch of friends or a group or strangers in the woods not everyone i'm not um judging everybody and putting everybody in one category again this is a generic experience that i've overgone through 10 this will be my 10th hunting season um, as an all-around hunter waterfowl uh, whitetail deer mule deer turkey uh, pigs you name it I mean I, I I've, I've hunted it not everything but generally speaking I've gone to a lot of places and I've hunted a lot of things um, when you get out to that public land when you get out to that BLM when you get out to that place there's so many tools that you have and there's one thing that I find in common that we all lack and I'm not saying that as a group I'm not saying that as myself I'm not saying that as you I'm saying what I've seen and that's that's kind of like a, a common ground with everybody I wouldn't say respect because I think that's too much because I have ran into other hunters and some guys have been really 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 nice and really respectful I've made friends in the woods I've made friends in the parking lots I've talked to people for two hours in the parking lot and made friends and had a great time but when you get aggressive and you get excited and you you get determined I think a lot of people change their plans as far as you know the priorities of, of hunting 
You know, some people go hunting with their children and they pass this down on public land. And some people aren't as fortunate to have that lease that nobody gets to go on, that it's, that it's tranquil. There's a lot of hunters that won't take their kids on public land because of this. I've kind of talked about this and I've touched on it on my other videos, but I wanted to iterate it a little bit more because I feel like it's still a pressing issue and I want to get some more views on it and I want to, want to help. I'm not fighting the battle of the bad people and the good people. I am strictly doing this for my opinion, educational purposes if you've never been hunting out in the woods on public land, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So my communication with people when I go out in the woods, I, I touch on a lot of things. I touch on, hey, where are you going to be at? If, sometimes you go to the parking lot and it's 4.30 in the morning and there's three, four, five, six trucks out. You know, and you've got your climber tree stand or you've got your bag of decoys and you don't know where anybody is. And you scouted it the day before and you didn't see any signs of people and opening day comes and people don't scout. People just hear word of mouth like, oh, hey, this is going to be a good spot. Head out there. I'll give you the directions and, 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 and you know, give it a shot. And they do that. And that seems to cause not necessarily an issue but it seems to derive from your goal because now you think you're inconvenienced by someone walking past your tree stand and messing up your scent or someone coming out and setting up 50 yards from you 40 minutes before shooting light and you know you're bummed and then you're like public land guys there's so much you can do to communicate with people in a nice respectable easy manner and one thing that my uh, my mentors told me is say what you mean you know you don't have to be disrespectful you don't have to be rude you don't have to um, put people down just say what you mean like hey man I'm gonna be out here with my child today he's a youth hunter you know I need you to move please you know I do have seniority I was here first I'm not asking you to give up the best spot I'm not saying that you aren't you know as equal of a hunter as I am to be here, I just for my safety of me and this other fellow hunter or just myself or me and my child, whatever the circumstances of who you're hunting with, it doesn't have to be an excuse, just say what you mean. And most of the time, as long as you're respectful, people will listen and people won't give you a hard time. You know, I've never, ever, 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 ever waterfowl hunted and someone asked me to move, ever. No one has ever came up to me and said, hey man, you are way too close. Someone has came up to me and said, hey, you know, after shooting hours, I didn't even know you were over there, you know, on the other side of a bend. And, you know, you put up lights, you put up glow sticks, you stay out there, you're, you know, your vehicle's marked, et cetera, et cetera. And, and people don't pay necessarily as much attention to detail as possible. And that happens. And that's why it's dangerous. And that's why it's sometimes scary but for the most part I've had good experiences on public land with talking with people you know I've I came out solo and have been told hey you know we've got a full group or we'd let you in um, and I've even given up the best spot as weird as that sounds you know I'm out there to, to, to enjoy nature and, and, and harvest an animal or multiple animals or whatever the species I'm targeting but generally for waterfowl it seems to be the present issue with public land and and you know guys getting in fist fights in the parking lot and people getting peppered which if you don't know what pepper means it means someone shoots in the air close to you and when the the shell comes out um, and and discharges that round all the BBs come down on top of you and it sounds like it's raining and that's a bummer and it's dangerous. I, I've actually seen someone get shot before by mistake. It uh, wasn't a mistake. Um, the person didn't know what they were doing and shot at a bird that was already wounded and, and coming down out of the air. And when they shot, they shot right at us and the BBs bounced off the ice and went right up in his forehead and kind of skinned him. He lived, thank God. But again, knowing where you're setting up, knowing the people around you. Sometimes if I get out to a public place, and nobody's gonna be there 
and I know where I'm going is kind of a short distance, you know, I can make it there within that 20 minutes before shooting light, have everything ready and be fine and be a little rushed, but not really. I'll wait in the parking lot by myself. And I generally try not to go by myself, but when I say, you know, by myself, you know, with someone with me, cause that's smart, safe, but not always the option. So I will get to a, a spot on public land and I'll sit in that parking lot and I'll wait till if no one shows up, the first truck shows up at five or 10 minutes after me, hey guys, this is this is where I plan on going. It's just me and so-and-so or it's just me, so-and-so and so-and-so, whoever, or hey, I'm by myself today. You know, this is a spot I scouted. There's birds in the area. You know, I'd like to keep a safe, respectable distance, minimum of 100 yards, guys. If that's not applicable, you know, I'm not going to sit there and guard the parking lot with one spot only to hunt and tell everybody to go home. No, that's that's not what you do. That's that's not what makes it um, enjoyable for everyone to experience. Now, what a lot of people don't understand, and I will say that, what a lot of people don't understand, don't understand, is just because you found a bird in a certain area or a group of birds or you scouted a pond and that pond is full and the pond next to it is completely empty means nothing it does pay a good factor as to you know your success rate but you can still shoot birds in other places okay i've sat on um i would say like a dike or a median in uh in between two ponds and the dike was about 80 yards long and I watch birds just drop into the one on the left side. Just drop for 20 minutes, hundreds of ducks, hundreds of mallards, pintails, teal, widgeon, everything you can imagine. Wood ducks were there. I mean, it, it was just a multi-species extravaganza of birds coming in. Beautiful. And I was like, okay, sweet. This is where I'm gonna hunt tomorrow. Go home, go to bed, get up early, get out there, and there's two trucks. And you're there right at legal time that you're allowed to be there and God knows how long they've been there because they're walking back and they beat you by a few minutes. You know, it happens. It really does happen on public land. That doesn't mean your hunt is over, but that doesn't mean you go set close to those people either. Okay? You know that more than likely a lot of that action is going to be in that spot. But you don't have to be dangerous and you don't have to be greedy with with your idea because that's what it comes down to is greed. You want to kill those ducks or you want to shoot this or you you don't want to waste your time. I get that. But you got to be safe, you got to be smart, and you got to be helpful to each other. Respect your fellow hunter. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person because they beat you or it doesn't mean they're a bad person because they don't want to hunt with you or it doesn't mean they're a bad person because you know they got your spot. It's not your spot. It's nobody's spot. It's public. Everybody deserves a right to be there in a safe distance from each other. And that's pretty much the main topic that I am pretty present in a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, pretty adamant about as far as my issue I've had with that spot in particular. Because let's be honest, anywhere else, like, have you, I, I, I haven't encountered this. Leave a comment below if you have, like, I've deer hunted on public land, probably. I don't know, five or six dozen different times. I've been successful twice out of all those, out of like three seasons, three full seasons on public land. And you know, I got to hunt private in between here and there. Deer hunting's been a little different for me. I've been lucky for deer hunting and turkey hunting. But for the most part, but for the most part, I've been really lucky on public land. Um, with waterfowl hunting, with turkey hunting, but not so much with deer. Um, same technique, scouting, all that, but I've never had someone come up and sit right next to me in a deer stand. But then, but then again, when you go deer hunting, you're not just targeting water, you're not just targeting a field or one particular spot for that species. There's tons of different things you can get into and we can go over as far as how that works and how to get away from people and how to scout and there's also tons of videos on you know how to get out and how to find better spots deer hunting and signs to look for places to go tips techniques and you know we can get onto that in another video but my main focus with this was waterfowl hunting hunting in general and 
you know, why public land sucks. I don't think it sucks in the aspect that I'm not going to go out there. Um, I'm definitely going to try not to go out there by myself. I don't think that's necessarily smart. Um, if it's an easy access place right by a road, you can hunt 40, 50 yards from your vehicle. You might get lucky. Sure, it's worth it maybe an afternoon. Um, for me, I'm not one that's going to walk four miles back into that deep, thick timber by myself. I just not my cup of tea for waterfowl hunting. Um, deer hunting obviously is a different story. Uh, there's so much technology that OnX hunting app is amazing. I mean, it just it just opens a door for everyone, everybody. And, and uh, there's uh, so many people that haven't even like heard of it or don't even know about it. It's real. It rocks and it works. It's an app. Go check it out on the App Store. Onyx. It's got an X that's red with a black uh, X through it. It's a little red square X through it. Check it out. Download it. Pay for the subscription. It's cheap. Pay for it. You will find 50% more places to hunt, at least, unless you know you own God's Island, to go and safely get there. It's got pinpoints. It shows you who owns it, if it's private, where it's public. You know the borders where you're at where you're not what's there i mean again not trying to get too off topic about that and i'm not endorsed by them or sponsored by them i'm just telling you it's a great app check them out because that is what's going to help you find more public land there's places that i can go here in oklahoma that are 10,000 acre refuges that you're allowed to, to waterfowl hunt that you're allowed to deer hunt that you're allowed to turkey hunt and people only hunt the first acre or the first three acres or, or the first mile of the front and that's it there's so much more to to explore and find and, and have the tools to do that to get into to you know where you're away from people getting away from people I think is the most important part about hunting being in your zone with either your, your friends or, or wherever you're at finding those new places that are tucked back in the middle of nowhere that you're allowed to hunt you're allowed to be there that, that you know is just kind of untouched that's what people love to see that's what people love to do I like going to those easy quick creeks I like going to those nice ponds I'm excited I get to go on the rivers now with my new boat um, I love river hunting I love it when it gets cold winter's the favorite part of the year for me um, there's a lot of things that you can do to make hunting better there's a lot of things you can do to make public land better and the first part of that is communication with everybody. Talk to people. Be respectful. Like, hey, man, I'm not, I'm not shooting any disrespect. I have nothing against you. I would just appreciate it if you moved down for my safety. You know, I, I, again, I'm not being rude. I just, I need this to happen. Or, you know, move yourself. If someone is so intolerantly ignorant that they can't respect the fact that you made it there before them, and they want to stay right there. Just get away from them. It's not worth your life. It's not worth you getting injured. It's not worth the, the I can't take it back. Because you can't take anything back when it comes to that kind of stuff. If you get hurt out there, it can be very, very, very serious, if not fatal. There's firearms involved, firearms and anger, firearms and tempers. You don't know who else is out there. You don't know if they're a legal hunter. You don't know their story, their background. You don't know what's going to happen. Now, that doesn't mean you cower down to everybody every time someone gives you the, the thumb because, let's be honest, some, some people will be rude to you. They will be disrespectful to you. They will say, you know, piss off, man, or yeah, I don't care what you're saying, man. I'm not going to do anything. And that's when you get the game wardens involved. And a lot of times they're not going to make it out there in time because, you know, it's early. They haven't started their shift yet or you know they're busy at another call because of something else opening day is a, a fiasco i i don't even try to go somewhere that i know people are going to be on opening day because i hunted this place in uh, wagner oklahoma love it beautiful place to hunt uh, ducks unlimited's got a management program out at this particular spot awesome public land tons of people know about it tons of people go it's like four different uh flooded fields that are about five foot deep and then the perimeter around it gets deeper sometimes and they flood it it's full of soybeans and, and it just goes on and on and on probably 400 yards long and there's like four of them and they're huge and people will just be lined up like little pinpoints 
like a run race strip for a freaking airplane to take off and you're just like I've pulled in there during teal season and saw 64 trucks now that place could probably in all honesty hold 30 vehicles no problem and be safe it really in all honesty could if everybody just spread out safe distances that place is big enough to hold those kind of numbers it really is but you're gonna have to work for it and a lot of people you know they'll pull into the parking lot they'll get right to the top where they can see something they'll look they'll find it okay right here and then they leave they won't go to the back or they won't go all the way down and all the way over and then around that corner and then look in there and if they do then there's then there's 10 15 25 people in there that have caused issues with that particular thing and so that's kind of a downfall that's kind of an issue that uh, that I've seen with that take your time get out there do everything you can and don't don't rush anything communicate with everybody do the best you can and work with what you got that's all for Millennial Waterfowl